Greetings and salutations this is read aloud, extension for Firefox, reading out loud a script written by your host Invisible the Non-Existent, today we shall be reading about the most recently finished project, PlayStation 1 Jumping Flash. Let's begin. Jumping Flash. Jumping Flash. Jinping Gyutaris Hu. Aroha Dance Haku Fanki Daisakasen no Maki, is a video game released in 1995 for the Sony PlayStation. It was developed by Exactco, Limited and Ultraco, LTD, and published by Sony Computer Entertainment. Jumping Flash Was re-released in the PlayStation Store as a downloadable game for the PlayStation Portable and PlayStation 3. Plot An evil and demented astrophysicist named Baron Aloha has removed giant pieces of land from the crater planet using his gigantic land-lifting machines to turn it into his own private resorts. Aloha has also removed and hidden away the jet pods that propel each world. As the residents of Crater Planet call for help, the Universal City Hall sends one of their agents, a robotic bunny named Robert, to find the jet pods, stop Aloha, and save Crater Planet from emptiness. Aloha surrounds himself with creatures called Mew Mews, small, white, five-limbed creatures with palm trees on their heads. Many of the game's full motion videos feature the Mew Mews in an izakaya, humorously recounting their defeat at the hands of Robert. Gameplay The gameplay in Jumping Flash is noted as being nearly identical to Geograph Seal, an earlier game by the same developer released in 1994 for the Sharp X68000. The game is presented in a first-person perspective, and the player can freely walk in three-dimensional space and rotate the camera in any direction. The user interface resembles that of viewing through Robert's eyes. The top part of the screen shows the time remaining, the player's score, and Kumigoro, Robert's sidekick who offers the player warnings and hints. The top left shows firework items, while the top right contains the radar, showing the location of various objects including enemies, power UPS, jet pods, and enemy projectiles. The bottom is filled out with a health meter on the sides with the number of lives in the center of it. A screenshot from the first level showing the general interface. The core of the gameplay is centered around the player's ability to make Robot jump. Robot can jump up to three times, once off of a surface and twice in mid-air, allowing him to reach extreme heights. Unlike other platform games which continue to face horizontally when the player jumps, Jumping Flash tilts the camera downwards when a double jump or triple jump is performed to allow the player to see Robot's shadow and easily plan a landing spot. Jumping chains can be performed using enemies and some projectiles. The player has the ability to shoot a low-powered beam where a target indicator is centered in the middle of the screen. In addition, the player can find and use special items for Robot in the form of fireworks to do massive damage to enemies, which include cherry bombs, rockets, roman candles, and twisters. Other power UPS scattered across each world come in the form of picture frames representing carrots to extend Robot's health, extra lives, timeouts that stop the clock and freeze all the level's dynamics for a few seconds, power glasses that extend the player's time, and power pills that make Robot invincible for a short amount of time. Coins worth points can also be picked up by destroying enemies. The enemies are often of animal-like creatures such as kiwis and penguins, but also robots and plants. Most have simple actions such as wandering around aimlessly, shooting or throwing projectiles out randomly. A few, however, have more intelligence such as the bomb-forming beetles or missile-shooting pigs. Jumping Flash is composed of six worlds with three levels each, totaling 18 main levels, of which there are seven boss levels and an extra six bonus stages available. In the main levels, the objective of the first two levels of each world is to collect four jet pods with the letters E, X, I, and T on them. After collecting them, landing on the exit pad is all that remains in finishing the level. The third level in each world is a boss fight. The level designs vary, from Egypt-style desert to a roller coaster-filled theme park. While most of the levels are large outdoor excursions, Two of the game's levels are enclosed within a narrow interior and are somewhat maze-like. The hidden bonus levels feature various blocks with balloons in them, popping the balloons yields either coins or power-ups. A time attack mode is available for any level the player has completed. Upon completing the 18 main levels, the levels can be played again with objects rearranged and a more difficult setup. Development The main concept of Jumping Flash was borrowed from Osamu Tezuka's experimental animation Jumping. Tetsuji Yamamoto, producer at SCE, wanted to turn the floating feeling present in Tezuka's animation into video game form. To put his plan into action, Yamamoto teamed Exact, 
who had previously made Geograph Seal for the Sharp X68000, up with Ultra, who were quite famous at the time for having done the CG for the popular Japanese television show Yugo Yugo Ruga, and tasked them with making his idea become a reality. Music The music for Jumping Flash was composed by Takeo Miratsu. Many of the tracks were included with tracks from Jumping Flash 2, which Miratsu also composed, on the Jumping Flash 2 original game soundtrack. The soundtrack was published by Antinos Records in Japan in 1996. Reception and Legacy Jumping Flash Received positive review scores after its release, including a 4.1-5 from GamePro, a 4 fifths from Next Generation Magazine, and an 8.6-10 The game was scored a 34 out of 40 by Famitsu, ranking it among the magazine's top 120 game of all time in 2000. IGN's original review gave Jumping Flash a 7.5-10, stating that despite some of the relatively small worlds and easy difficulty, it is a great, genre-pushing game. Game Revolution cited the same complaints, but calls the graphics mind-blowing and the game itself totally unique, giving it an A score. Albert Kim of Entertainment Weekly stated, perhaps the most euphoric sensation comes at the height of a turbocharged jump, when you can look below and see the world quietly slip away. Despite its innovation and critical acclaim, other 3D platformers such as Super Mario 64 would go on to become a standard for the genre. In 2007, Matt Kazamasina of IGN described Jumping Flash as the third most underrated video game of all time. Jumping Flash did manage to produce a few sequels. Jumping Flash 2, also developed by Exact, was released worldwide on PlayStation a year later. Two loose sequels, Robot Mondew on PlayStation and Pocket Mew Mew compatible with the Pocket Station, were released exclusively in Japan by Sugar and Rockets. Robot Robot, Robito, is a robotic rabbit employed by Universal City Hall to deal with various problems throughout a specified sector of the galaxy. It is hard to determine if Robot has a gender, its unblinking red eyes and expressionless face lending no hints towards a male or female personality. That said, Universal City Hall refers to Robot as a he. Robot's strengths include the ability to triple jump high into the air on a pair of electromagnetic, spring-activated legs, fire an unlimited stream of bullets from his sparkle beam gun, and collect and activate numerous weapons. Robot also comes equipped with a support AI that appears in his heads-up display as a springy, vaguely bear-esque hood ornament. It indicates how high Robot has jumped and if danger is nearby and also offers hints and tips on what to do next. Through the course of the first two games Robot's design changes little with only some refinements in overall geometry. For the third game, Robot Mondeo, Robot is painted gold, has slightly more expressive eyes and gets a sleeker, smaller design. Throughout his battles with his brave deeds net him hyperbolic praise from the narrator who dubs him a freedom-loving, robo-heroic, battle bunny and a high-octane, multidimensional heroic robo-bunny. Universal City Hall The Universal City Hall, Shiyaka Show is a part of the series S universe. As dire situations occur, they are most often immediately contacted, even for the smallest tasks, as shown in Robot Mondeo. Not much is actually known about them except that Robot has been dispatched from them in all three games. They tend to refer Robot as one of their agents, meaning there is more than just Robot, in Robot Mondeo, there are more agents similar to him. They tend to address him as a he. It is not clear whether the spaceship in the beginning of all games is the Universal City Hall itself or merely a part of it. Jumping Flash 1 As the opening movie rolls, the astrophysicist named Baron Aloha went through the plan of removing giant pieces of land from the crater planet using his land-lifting machines to turn them into his own private resorts. Aloha also took and had hidden away the jet pods that propel each world. The residents of Crater Planet were forced to call for help from Universal City Hall and they send one of their agents, Robert, to find the jet pods, stop Aloha, and save Crater Planet from emptiness. Baron Aloha Aloha Jean Peperovich Macadamian 13, Aroha Jan Peperovich Macadamian 13 SEI, better known by his title Baron Aloha, Aroha Dance Haku, is the main antagonist of the Jumping Flash series. A curmudgeonly mad scientist and noble hailing from the planet Macadamia, he is bent on world domination and frequently clashes with Universal City Hall's robotic agent Robot in his quest for power. He resides on the tropical planet Little Mew, where he rules over the Mew Mew species and enlists their help in creating his diabolical contraptions. History Before Jumping Flash 
Baron Aloha was born on the planet of Macadamia, raised alongside a sister by his mother and father. He exhibited incredible skills with science and machinery in his youth, with one of his early inventions being a fully automatic forward flicking machine. At age 16, he would one day wake up and come to realize that he was destined to become an evil scientist, which led him to stage multiple attempts to take over Macadamia, though none of them ever succeeded. By the time he had turned 19, he was banished from his home planet. At an unspecified point in time, Aloha came across the frosty planet of Little Mew. Weaponizing a virus, he subjugated the planet and made it his base of operations, turning it into a sunny paradise in the process. He also forced the Mew Mews to go through a harsh education in order to learn how to build and operate machines so they could eventually assist in his evil plans. Jumping Flash Baron Aloha, desiring a vacation spot for himself, constructs a series planetary excavation robots called Karagaraji to cut off sections of the humble crater planet to serve as holiday retreats, and they soon become overrun with his many henchmen. The citizens of the planet call for help from Universal City Hall, who dispatch their best pest control robot Robot. However, Aloha has hidden the jet pods that propel each piece of land, and Robot must locate and collect all four in each world to save the planet's lands. After clearing World 5, the Baron boasts to Robot about a secret machine that he has created in the event all his others would be destroyed, and in the last stage of World 6, it is revealed as a robot version of himself named Aloha Robo, equipped with all sorts of dangerous weapons. As the robot meets its demise, Baron Aloha tells Robot that he has yet to truly take out his bases, and that his minions are really ready for him, thus initiating extra mode. Robot goes through each world once again, and upon making it through extra 5, Baron Aloha exclaims that Aloha Robo's energy has been restored and that he is unstoppable. Robot proves victorious a second time through, which causes the evil genius to make a getaway on his tiny ship and vow to get revenge as he hollers, as long as science still exists in this world, I'll be back. Goodbye. Until we meet again. After the credits have finished, a short extra scene shows an unhappy Aloha walking into the Izakai Oahu, and upon seeing all his minions slacking off, he angrily asks what's all this. Personality Baron Aloha is a selfish and cunning individual who never hesitates to stoop low to achieve his goals. Willing to backstab even those who help him and recruit those who once menaced him, he demonstrates that those around him are either pawns in his schemes or enemies to be wiped out. The only characters he shows much fondness for are the Mew Mews, as even though he tends to boss them around, many promotional artworks depict him hanging out and doing things with them, implying he does like them to some extent. Aloha also shows a predilection for anything tropical, which manifests itself in numerous ways, from his summary makeover of Little Mew to his collection of 5,000 Hawaiian shirts. Aloha possesses great scientific knowledge and uses it to create various technologies for himself. While many of his creations are combat robots that he sends to fight Robot, he also has made more mundane things, such as a high-performance laptop that can play 3,000 different games, including Go and Othello, and even his very own monocle. His status as a scientist also ties into his opinions on marriage, to which he believes no evil scientist, himself included, should be wed. However, he seems to not mind being admired by women, as when a 42-year-old beauty confessed her love to him in a Q&A, Aloha turned her down but requested her address, phone number, a photo of herself and her bust waist hip measurements. Okay, other uh, than the bust and the waist measurements, I really wouldn't have asked for anything else, since hips measurements are none of my business, and I'm not into that kind of trash anymore. This, uh, this is the end of the wiki video. Thanks all for your attention and best of luck. Till we meet next time with the Jumping Flash 2. Take care.